Sitka just came out with their all new Merino lineup and I'm personally very excited about it. It's got a new type of fabric, their stitching is done right, and they have really specific weights that are gonna fit all types of needs. So if you haven't seen their website, they organized it into three weights. You've got the 120, the 220, and then the 330. Now I'll break those down in a bit, but first I wanna talk about the actual Merino itself and the way that they spun it. So Sitka uses a process that they call armor spun technology. Basically, most Merino nylon blends are gonna be around 10% nylon, 90% Merino, and they've got a nylon core that's then wrapped in the wool. Whereas armor spun is about 15% nylon, 85% Merino. And what they've done is taken a Merino core and done a strand of nylon around that. That gives you a couple different things. Number one is it gives you increased abrasion resistance because that nylon is on the outside. So it's gonna help, that, help keep that merino intact, keep it from fraying. Number two is that the nylon is gonna accept print a lot better. So they're able to make all three of these pieces in full camo pattern and it should last without fading. So I'll jump right in and talk about these three different weights when I would use them and which one you might wanna purchase. We'll start with what I'm wearing, which is the 120. Uh, this is a paper thin layer, and that's pretty unique in Merino because when you get this thin, it's gonna start to fall apart. But with their new armor spun technology, it should hold together pretty well. I've used it a couple times and there is zero signs of use, even though I was archery hunting with this as an outer layer. So, so far so good. The reason that I'm excited about it being so thin is the dry time. The downside of Merino is that it's going to hold moisture, especially on a longer backpacking hunt. You really do not want your base layer to get wet and not dry out. This being so thin, air cuts straight through it. It's super breathable and it's going to dry in no time. It's going to be comparable to something like the core lightweight hoodie, which is polyester. Obviously, being that it's Merino, it's going to help keep the odor down. It's going to add some warmth. It's going to be stretchy, comfortable, all of the things that you're looking for in a base layer. In all honesty, this is probably the first piece of gear that I've ever worn that I will say, I would take this on every single hunt that I go on. And that's a big claim, but the reason I say that is I will absolutely wear this as a next skin layer on a cold hunt. I would also wear it as a next to skin layer on a really warm hunt. So the Merino fibers are gonna hold water a little bit better than polyester. In turn, you're gonna have a little more moisture in your layer and that's gonna help cool you. The Merino really just regulates your temperature in hot conditions and in cold conditions, which is a huge benefit. So for me personally, I bought this piece and I'm gonna wear it a lot this year. Moving on to the 220. This is quite a bit thicker than the 120. Uh, now the weight actually represents grams per square meter of wool. So the 220 is gonna be about twice as thick and about twice as warm as the 120. Now the downside to this piece is that it's not gonna dry as quickly. This one being so thin allows a lot of airflow. This one's a little thicker, so it's gonna hold that moisture. I would still absolutely wear this on a hot hunt, but if you're looking at like Alaska, a more humid environment, something that you're living out of your backpack and heavy rains are coming down, a piece like this is not gonna dry on your body or in your tent overnight. Something like the 120, I have a lot more hope for waking up and having a dry layer. And a dry next to skin layer is huge. So I would use this on almost every hunt, but being that it's Merino, I would probably leave this at home for a wetter hunt, something that I expect to be getting rained on and not able to dry out that night. Moving on to the 330, this piece is a little bit different than the other two. The reason for that is both of these pieces are 15% nylon, 85% Merino. This one is going to be 54% Merino, 11% nylon, and then the remaining 35% is polyester. Now what they did, which I think is really fantastic, is they did a polyester lining on your next to skin layer. So you've got the same Merino that's in the 220 on the outside, that armor spun, everything's the same. On the inside, they put a polyester layer. So that's going to help with that clammy next to skin feel that you'll get a lot of times out of these thicker merino layers. Just because it's so thick that you don't get that breathability, the polyester is gonna pull the moisture away from your skin, the merino is gonna soak that moisture up. 
So this is going to mitigate a lot of the complaints that people have about a thicker merino feeling clammy. Personally, I would probably go for the 220 or the 120 over the 330 for most any purchasing decision, but I would absolutely wear this on a very cold hunt. Being that I'm mostly hunting big game though, I'm probably going to look for something a little thinner, something that's going to dry quicker, and something that I can have a little higher exertion in. Now as far as weight and price goes, you're looking at 6.1 ounces and about 120 bucks. You're looking at 11.1 ounces and $199. Then over here you're at 15 ounces and 220. So there's definitely a weight penalty. It's not quite linear and the price is not linear either. Another reason that I would say if you're just starting out and looking for a great base layer that you can use anytime, the 120 is really, it just, it just fits that niche perfectly. So I'm really excited about this piece if you can't tell. Uh, I plan to use it a lot this season and see how it holds up because again being so thin uh, it's, it's really susceptible especially when worn as an outer layer to tearing and falling apart which I hope that it does not. One more feature that I forgot to mention uh, is the fact that Sitka does all of their stitching on the inside. This is somewhat common but a really big thing to look for if you're looking for a merino layer. Those stitches will grab any sort of brush and come apart and it's, it's a mess. So definitely look for a piece that has stitching on the inside, such as all of Sitka's Merino line. If you have looked at their website, you'll see that they also came out with bottoms in the same weights. I won't go into that too much because that's really dealer's choice, but personally, I would definitely purchase the 220 bottom. I think the 120 bottom is going to be just thin enough that it won't make a huge difference. Uh, it, it'd be nice, but I don't know if I'll spend my money on that. The 330 bottom is going to be a little thicker than I want personally, but if you're going to be a little more stagnant on your hunt, or if it's really cold out, that could be a great option. They also have the intercept line, which has a top and a bottom meant to be an outer layer. The intercept hoodie is going to be just like your 220, but with a couple extra features, some pockets, a couple hood features, things that make it a really great outer layer for archery hunting. The intercept pants, however, are a whole different beast. They have a grid merino backer on the inside, so that's going to give you your insulation, your odor control, and on the outside, they went with a nylon. The reason for that is any merino pant is just going to fall apart uh, over extended use, especially when you're archery hunting, you're crawling on your knees. So they decided to put a nylon outer on that. It's got good pockets, it's got knee pads, it's got all the features that an archery hunter would want, and it's still going to be deadly quiet. I'm going to do a video on those, hopefully at the end of this year, after a little bit of use and see what I actually think. But I am really excited for those pants. It's a first in the industry, and it's definitely an innovative product that I am excited to get my hands on. Now real quick, the last thing I want to cover is fit, because that's always a question, right? Which size should you order? Normally sick is pretty good, but every once in a while I find that I need to size down. What I've found is the 220 and the 330 are both true to size. I'm normally a large, I would wear a large in both of these. The large in the 120, however, was actually a, lar a bigger fit than either of these, and I found that the medium fit me a lot better. So if you're shaped anything like me, consider sizing down for the 120, but if you're going with either of these pieces, true to size. That's all I have so far on the new Merino line. I'm going to continue to test these pieces, hopefully do a video at the end of the season to give my final thoughts after some actual use. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget, we are selling all of these pieces on the Gearful website. It's gearful.com, so go check it out.